join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. At the dawn of the 20th century, leprosy was a word spoken in whispers. It carried centuries of fear, exile, and misunderstanding, a disease so burdened by stigma that those diagnosed were often erased from society long before death. In the United States, and particularly in the Pacific, leprosy was treated not only as a medical condition but as a moral sentence. Patients were exiled to remote colonies, separated from families, stripped of names, and left to endure a slow, visible decline. By 1915, medicine had little to offer them beyond isolation and despair. And yet, in a small laboratory thousands of miles from the mainland, a young black woman quietly achieved what generations of physicians had failed to do. She created the first effective treatment for leprosy. Her name was Alice Augusta Ball. History would not remember it for decades. Alice Ball's story does not begin in a leprosy colony or a tropical hospital ward. It begins in Seattle, Washington in 1892, where she was born into a family that valued education, discipline, and scientific curiosity. Her father, James Presley Ball Jr., was a lawyer and newspaper editor. Her grandfather, James Presley Ball Sr., was one of the most renowned photographers in 19th century America, known for documenting black life with dignity at a time when caricature was the norm. In this household, excellence was not aspirational. It was expected. Alice absorbed this ethic early. She excelled in school, showing an unusual aptitude for science, particularly chemistry, a field that at the time was almost entirely closed to women and even more hostile to black Americans. She attended the University of Washington, where she earned two degrees, one in pharmaceutical chemistry and another in pharmacy. Even this achievement was extraordinary. Very few women were admitted into scientific programs, and fewer still were allowed to excel without obstruction. Alice Ball did more than excel. She graduated at the top of her class. Her professors noticed not only her intelligence, but her meticulous laboratory technique and her ability to think creatively about chemical problems. These qualities would soon change the course of medical history. After completing her studies in Washington, Alice Ball was offered a scholarship to pursue graduate work at the College of Hawaii, now the University of Hawaii. In 1915, Hawaii was a U.S. territory, not yet a state, and its medical challenges were unlike those on the mainland. Among the most pressing was leprosy, now known as Hansen's disease. The islands were home to one of the most infamous leprosy settlements in the world, Kulupapa, located on the isolated Kalawao Peninsula of Molokai. There, thousands of native Hawaiians and others diagnosed with leprosy had been forcibly removed from their homes and confined, often for life. For centuries, leprosy had resisted treatment. Physicians had tried everything from bloodletting to mercury to toxic plant extracts. One substance, however, had shown limited promise. Chalmogra oil, derived from the seeds of trees native to South and Southeast Asia, had been used in traditional medicine for generations. Some patients showed improvement when treated with it, but the oil was thick, sticky, and nearly impossible to administer effectively. Taken orally, it caused severe nausea and vomiting. Injected, it formed painful lumps under the skin and was poorly absorbed by the body. As a result, Chalmogra oil was more torture than cure. This was the problem Alice Ball was asked to solve. At just 23 years old, she became the first woman and the first black person to earn a master's degree from the College of Hawaii. She was also appointed as an instructor in chemistry, making her the institution's first female chemistry professor. These accomplishments alone should have secured her a place in academic history. But it was her work on Chalmogra oil that would define her legacy, even as others tried to erase it. Ball approached the problem as a chemist, not a physician. She understood that the issue was not whether Chalmogra oil had therapeutic potential, but whether it could be made usable by the human body. Through careful experimentation, she isolated the active fatty acids in the oil and modified them chemically to create ethyl esters that were water-soluble. This was the breakthrough. 
By making the treatment injectable and absorbable, she transformed Chalmogra oil from a crude folk remedy into a viable medical therapy. For the first time, patients with leprosy began to improve consistently. Lesions healed. Pain diminished. Mobility returned. Some patients were declared no longer contagious and were released from isolation. In an era when leprosy had been considered a life sentence, this was nothing short of revolutionary. But Alice Ball would not live to see the full impact of her work. In late 1916, she fell ill. The exact cause of her death remains uncertain, but many historians believe it was related to chemical exposure in the laboratory, possibly chlorine gas used during demonstrations or experiments. She died on December 31, 1916, at the age of 24. Her death was sudden, devastating, and quietly absorbed by an academic system that was unprepared and perhaps unwilling to honor her properly. After Ball's death, her research was taken over by Arthur L. Dean, the president of the College of Hawaii and a chemist himself. Dean continued her work, published the results, and presented the treatment as his own. He named it the Dean Method. For years, scientific journals, medical conferences, and textbooks credited him with the discovery. Alice Ball's name vanished from the narrative entirely. This erasure was not accidental. It followed a familiar pattern in the history of science, particularly when the contributions of black women were involved. Ball was young. She was black. She was a woman. She had no powerful institutional allies to defend her authorship. Her laboratory notes were left behind, and Dean had access to them. In an era with few protections for intellectual credit, especially for marginalized scholars, taking ownership of her work carried little risk. Meanwhile, the treatment spread. Throughout the 1920s and 1930s, the injectable Chalmogra derivative developed by Alice Ball became the standard treatment for leprosy around the world. It was used in Hawaii, across the United States, and in leprosy hospitals in Asia, Africa, and the Caribbean. Thousands of patients benefited. Entire leprosy colonies saw improvements in quality of life and survival rates. Although the treatment was eventually replaced in the 1940s by sulfone drugs and later multidrug therapies, it remained the best available option for more than two decades. And yet, the name associated with this medical milestone was wrong. The consequences of this misattribution went beyond personal injustice. By erasing Alice Ball, the scientific community reinforced a false narrative about who could be a pioneer in chemistry and medicine. It perpetuated the idea that innovation flowed from white male institutions alone, while the labor and intellect of black women remained invisible. This distortion shaped generations of students, researchers, and policymakers, narrowing the imagination of what scientific leadership could look like. The rediscovery of Alice Ball's contribution did not come until the late 20th century. In the 1970s, a historian at the University of Hawaii named Catherine Takara began investigating archival records and noticed inconsistencies in the story of the Dean Method. She found Ball's thesis, laboratory notes, and correspondence, which made it clear that the core chemical innovation had been hers. Slowly, her name resurfaced. In 2000, the University of Hawaii officially acknowledged Alice Ball's role. A plaque was placed on the campus, and February 29th was declared Alice Ball Day, a symbolic choice for a woman whose recognition had been so long delayed that it seemed to require a leap year to catch up. In 2007, the university awarded her a posthumous medal of distinction. In 2019, her name was added to the National Inventors Hall of Fame. These honors, while meaningful, came more than a century too late to correct the damage done to her career and legacy. Alice Ball never received the professional recognition, financial security, or historical standing she deserved during her lifetime. Her family did not benefit from patents or accolades. Her story became another example of how black innovation has often been mined, renamed, and claimed by others. It is important, however, to be precise about what Alice Ball achieved. She did not cure leprosy in the modern sense. Hansen's disease is a complex bacterial infection that requires prolonged antibiotic treatment. What she did was create the first scientifically validated, 
consistently effective treatment that allowed patients to recover function, reduce symptoms, and in many cases regain their freedom. In 1915, that achievement was as close to a miracle as medicine could offer. Equally important is understanding the human impact of her work. Leprosy patients were not just sick. They were criminalized, shunned, and erased. Families were torn apart. Children were taken from parents. Entire communities lived under the constant threat of forced removal. By making treatment possible, Alice Ball's discovery undermined the logic of lifelong isolation. It helped shift leprosy from a moral judgment to a medical condition. That shift saved not only bodies, but dignity. Her story also forces a reckoning with how history is written. Credit in science is not merely about accuracy. It is about power. Who gets cited, who gets funded, who gets remembered, and who disappears into footnotes are decisions shaped by race, gender, and institutional authority. Alice Ball's erasure was not an anomaly. It sits alongside the stories of countless others whose brilliance was acknowledged only after it could no longer threaten existing hierarchies. Today, as conversations about equity in science grow louder, Alice Ball's life offers both inspiration and warning. Inspiration because her intellect and determination triumphed over barriers that should have been insurmountable. Warning because even transformative work can be stolen when systems are designed to exclude. Her legacy now lives not only in plaques and proclamations, but in the lives of those she helped save and in the expanded understanding of who belongs in the history of science. Alice Augusta Ball was not a footnote. She was a pioneer. In 1915, a young black woman did what the world said she could not do. She transformed leprosy from a sentence of exile into a treatable disease. And for decades, a white man took the credit. History is finally beginning to tell the truth.